Another important check is the drift criterion, or in other words, comparing the relative lateral displacement to the allowable limits. This check is one of the most critical steps in the design process, and in some structures, especially moment frames, it can be the governing factor that changes the required member size. In section 12.8.6 of the code, drift criterion is explained. As mentioned in section 12.8.6.2, when determining drift, we don't need to consider the upper limit CU times TA for period, meaning we can directly use the analytical period for drift check. Since in our structure the analytical period was governing and we already used it, there is no need to make any changes to the period for this check. In Table 12.12-1, the allowable drift is provided based on the risk category and structure type. For our structure, it's equal to 0.025 times h. So according to the formula here, the drift we get from E tabs, meaning the relative lateral displacement divided by h, should be less than 0.025 times cd. The value of cd for this structure according to table 12.2-1 was determined to be 5.5. So if we calculate the allowable drift is 0.025 divided by 5.5, which comes out to 0.0045. To check the drift in ETAPS, we go to the Model Explorer window, then to the Tables tab, select Analysis Results, then Joint Output, and finally Displacement. From there, we show the diaphragm max over average drift table. Right click on the output case column. Select both S6PN and SYPN. And click apply multiple item filters. In this table you can see the average drift and the maximum drift of each story, accounting for building torsion. It's clear that the maximum drift is always greater than the average drift. According to section 12.8.6.5 of the ASC7 code, drift criterion should be based on the drift at the center of mass at stories. However, it perhaps doesn't provide the center of mass drift directly as an output, but we can use the average drift as a good approximation. So we need to check the average drift column and compare it to the allowable limit. Just like before, right click and select sort descending to find the maximum value in the column. As you can see, the maximum value of average drift is 0.0047, which slightly exceeds the allowable limit of 0.0045. If the difference were significant, we would need to resize the members right away to bring the drift within the limit. However, since the difference is small, we won't change the member sizes for now. Instead, we'll check the drift again during the structural force design phase. Another way to check the structure's drift is by going to display menu and selecting a story response plot. Here set the display type to diaphragm drifts and then set the case combo to a 6pn or a SYPN. We first check the drift in the x-direction. This method is easier but provides the maximum drift values. Using this method is a conservative approach since the code requires drift criterion based on the center of mass. The maximum value shown at the bottom of the plot must be less than the allowable drift. As you can see, it's 0.0049 which is greater than the allowable limit of 0.0045. We do the same check for the y direction, where the maximum value is 0.005, which is again greater than the limit of 